everybody. Hello, everybody. We're just getting the show started here. We're just getting it going here. Don't despair. Don't despair, because I'm coming. I'm a coming. Here I come. I'm coming up the stairs. I just got in the door. Oh, just got out of the car, as a matter of fact. Hey, what's going on? How are you? How are you? Yeah. It's me. It's the number one host here. Yeah, I'm back for another another try at this hosting thing. Let me just get myself acquainted here. Let me get myself comfortable. Here we go. Yeah. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. Yes. Yes. Hello. How are you? How you doing? Yeah. It's the guest host again. Yeah, here on the Storo Drive Nighthawk Show. Hello, Cambridge. How are you? Woo, woo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you didn't see me last time, my name, my name is Whitey. My name is Whitey O'Brien. That's right. That's right. It's your number one friend here, Whitey O'Brien. I'm guest hosting here on the Store Drive Nighthawk Show. Yeah, and I just got out of the car. Just drove two hours to get here all the way from Western Mass. So, yeah, the Store Drive Nighthawk Show. I got some special guests coming on. My producer says I got some amazing guests. And uh, if you just allow me a moment here, I'm just going to kind of... <clears throat> I got to tease my hair a little bit here. Yeah, oh, get myself all ready. Get myself excited. So, oh, yeah. Oh, being a host is... Oh, it's so fun. But sometimes it can be a little bit stressful, you know, if you're not ready for it. So let's just get myself ready over here. Oh, and the producer's sending one of my, he's sending one of my fans. He said he's sending one of my fans in to see me. Let's see who comes. Oh, my gosh. I've seen you before. I've seen you. What's your name? What's your name, little thing? My name is Liz. Oh, Liz. Oh, well, you're looking pretty. You're looking pretty tonight, Liz. Oh, I like that hair. I like that hair of yours, Liz. Oh, you are quite a thing. Are you single? As a matter of fact, I am single. Oh, Liz, well, i got to talk to you after the show. <clears throat> my producer is summoning me and telling me that my main guest is coming on soon. But, Liz, it's always good to see you, and maybe I could get to know you a little better after the show, huh? What do you say, huh? You never know. Oh, that's good to hear, Liz. Oh, Oh, Liz, you speak my language. I'll talk to you soon, Liz. Bye-bye. Oh, there goes, there goes somebody. I've seen her before. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting to know her better, if you know what I mean, yeah. Oh, why, why do you know how it is, right? Oh, the struggle, the struggle, right? So let's see now. we got a few announcements to make. Let's see. Today is February 8th, and it's always good to be here on the Store Drive Nighthawk Show. Oh, yes. I'm supposed to give a shout-out to the normal host. He says he's going to be coming on again sometime, but he likes to have a guest host now and then. That's the person I'm talking about. That His name is Austin Rutledge. That's right, Austin Rutledge, yeah. Let's see now. Oh, yes. Oh, ha! Whoa, okay. Uh, I've got to put that somewhere, somewhere where nobody can find it. Oh, oh. Oh, so I told you about my shopping experiences, right? Oh, and the checkout lines. I've become quite the shopping clerk. I can ring up my own groceries now, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know I can do that. Oh, and, and like I say, sometimes when, when no one's looking, I like to sneak a, little, sneak a little extra one in there, you know what I mean? Oh, 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 but it's not like I'm getting videotaped. Oh, oh, boy. All right, so... <clears throat> So thanks again to Austin Rutledge for letting me guest host on his show. I was supposed to mention his name, and I just did. So, oh, there you go, there you go. All right, so <clears throat> my producer has indicated that tonight we have a very special guest. I do not know who's coming on tonight, but apparently we have a very special guest. Someone who's new to the show and is going to embark us with some of their wisdom and intelligent conversation that they could have with us here. On the Store Drive Nighthawk show. How about that, huh? How about that, people? Are you, are you as excited as I am? Are you as excited as I am to see and hear, hear from these people? Oh, <clears throat> before I have the guest on, I, 
I guess I need to, uh, you know, just kind of mention something that happened to me recently. <sighs> yes, I went on vacation last week. That's right. I went to a place called Delaware. Yep, I was taking care of business. Taking care of business regarding my third wife, Sharon. Okay. Yeah, uh, it was some serious important business. I guess there was a warrant involved. And uh, <clears throat> as I was out there in Delaware for the week taking care of the business, I, I managed to have picked up a stomach virus. Oh, yes, the stomach virus. I ate something. I ate something. It was maybe some chicken that had gone wrong, or maybe it was too much peppers and onions. I'm getting old now, you know. My doctor says I can't be smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol no more. Oh, you know how that is. Oh, that's how I'm living now. He said, Whitey, if you keep on smoking, you keep on drinking, you ain't gonna be living. Oh, so I had to make some big changes in 2024, and to this, to this day, I, I have made those changes, and I'm doing, I'm doing okay. It's just sometimes, oh, sometimes, oh, 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 you know I want a cigarette. Oh, sometimes I want a cigarette so bad. Oh, 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 I can't stand it. I can't stand it. So I was down there last, this last week down there in Delaware, okay, and I got, I got a little stomach virus, all right, and it had me spending some long amounts of time in the laboratory. That's right, I spent a lot of time in the, in the bathroom, the men's bathroom, oh, in the restaurant, then at, at the place I was staying, at the hostel I was staying, oh, oh, I hope I'm not dumping too much information on you, oh, because, you know, when I get food poisoned, that means I'm going to be spending long amounts of time on the toilet. Yeah, that's right, oh, and for me, that means two balls down deep in that water. Yes, yeah. Why they ain't young anymore, you know, my scrotum dangles pretty far. <clears throat> Which reminds me, I, I should remind you, the audience out there, to put the kids away. Put the kids in another room. Put them, let them go play PlayStation or their video games or play with their TikTok or whatever they want to do. But don't let them watch this show sometimes, because we might have some adult content. <clears throat> but, and speaking of kids, don't even get me started on the kids today. You know, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the kids today don't have it as, as I did when I was growing up. It, it's just not the same as it was when I was a little one. As a matter of fact, I'd like to introduce a new word to the lexicon of today's vocabulary for the young, young kids out there growing up and learning. It's a word that begins with D and it ends with the back of my hand. Yeah, that word is... Discipline! Oh! Discipline! Oh, the kids today, they got it so easy. They got it so easy. They, they don't understand how it used to be when I was growing up. <clears throat> and as I, like I said, back when I was growing up, people used to smoke cigarettes up and down the street. They'd smoke them in the drugstore, smoke them in the hospitals, smoke them in the restaurants. Uh, yep. You just can't, you can't be doing that no more. But I gotta, I gotta give up the habit of smoking all the time. Oh, I, I need to find some other habits. <clears throat> I can't, I can't go around kicking ass. I can't break into, I can't go stealing or, you know, committing, committing crime. I gotta, I gotta live the good life now. You know, I am getting old. I, I suffer from arthritis, you know. <clears throat> all right, so, in, in a preparation to see our first guest, I'm going to get myself ready here. My producer has indicated that tonight's guest was a very special one and has a whole... Oh, what's the expression? A whole... Ooh, act to do. He's got a whole act he wants to perform. <clears throat> or he or she. I'm not sure if it's a he or she. But let's, let's just... Uh, <clears throat> let's just cue the music and get ourselves ready for our guest. Ooh, I think I can hear him coming down the hall. I can hear that person coming down the hall. Let's give a big shout out to the guest coming on. Let's just watch that door open and see what happens. Okay, let's get going here. All right. Are we, how we feeling? Are we comfortable in a chair now? Are y'all comfortable, ready to ready to see the next guest, the, the first guest of the show? Let's let's see. All right. <clears throat> uh, they're coming now. Here they come. 
first guest of the night. Come on in, the door's open. Come on down to the Whitey O'Brien Show. Come on in now, come on now. Hello? Huh? Hello? 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 Whitey O'Brien, it's me, your friend Rory. Oh, Rory. Rory, I remember you from last time. I do. I, I remember you, Rory. Thank you. Yes, I'm the one that goes to Waltham High School. I'm in the ninth grade. Yeah, you told us that already, Rory. All right. So you're back to, back to tell us more stories here, aren't you, Rory? With a name like Rory, I gotta ask, what's your last name? My name is Rory McNamara. Rory McNamara? Well, you must be Irish. Well, I don't like to tell everybody, but actually, my mother is Lithuanian. I think you might have been left out in the rain too long, Rory. So tell us now, Rory, why did you come on the Store Drive Nighthawk show? Why? Why did you come on? Do you want to come a little closer? Let's, let's move over here. Let's move over here. Why exactly did you come on the show, Rory? What do you got to tell us, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, I have recently been added to a tournament circuit for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. AD&D. AD&D? The hell's that? It sounds like a skin ointment or, or some kind of STD. Well, you said that last time, too, and it wasn't funny then, either. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know shit about Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Tell me more. Well, it's a role-playing game that was invented by Gary Gygax. And I'd like to play some of that with you on your show today, if I may. You want to, you want to take me in a, you want to take me uh, on an adventure in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons during our show? That's right, I would. I would like to do that, but I have to just take a moment. I have to get my equipment. Hold on. Son of a bitch. What is going on? What is going on? This kid, kid's making a lot of racket down there. What's he doing? He's fighting shit. What's he got down there? Oh, he's got some... I think I see him down there. He's, he seems to be... He's got a big piece of cardboard. and He's looking for a place. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Well, let's just see what happens now, huh? I think he's getting stuff ready. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I never played that game in my life. I have heard of it, though. Hmm. He's, he's bringing something. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to get to play it for the first time. Yes, you are. And I'm going to be the Dungeon Master. Oops. Oh, there we go. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to be the dungeon master on your first trip into Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, goody, goody, goody gumdrops. Well, I don't know sh shit about playing Advanced D&D, &D, so you're going to have to tell me. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how to play. Good, good. Let me just see what you got. Are you hiding anything back here? Let me just take a look now. Uh-huh, I see. All right, that looks like a piece of cardboard with a lot of numbers and information on it. It's like a cheat sheet, isn't it? That's right. That's right. It helps me know all the all the armor classes and, and hit point statuses and all the different saving throw numbers and and everything I need to be a good dungeon master. Dungeon master, jeez. Well, how are we going to play? You got to tell me, 
each step of the way on how to play Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Can you do that? Can I do that? I've been doing it for a tournament that's going across the country. I'm considered one of the most expert players of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons that there is. Well, how about that? Okay, so how do I play? What do I do? Well, thanks to me, I have some pre-rolled characters for you. I prepared them in advance. Let me just give them to you. Hold on. I have to go get them. Hold on. You've got some characters, huh? Oh, I know some characters myself. Let's just, let's just put it that way. <laughs> I hear something down there. So what, he's making some characters. I guess he's, he's, he's like a mad scientist or something. I don't know. Okay, Whitey. Now, I prepared some pre-rolled characters in advance for you. Pre-rolled characters? Sounds like marijuana. Pre-rolled. Oh, we don't do drugs in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I think you might be smoking pot, if you ask me. I don't know what pot looks like. I'm clean as a whistle. All right, so show me these pre-roll characters. Well, here's one right here. I'm going to just put it here. This one is a first-level thief. And he's the first one in the party that walks in front of the rest of the group. What's his name? Casal. Oh, Casal. He's a first level thief. All right, who else? Well, I have I have a second character named Xander. Xander is a third level elf magic user with magic spells. And your third character is Finn. Finn is a fourth level druid fighter. He's a druid fighter. So that means he can cast magic spells and do druid things and also fight because he's a fighter. That's right. Yes, that's his name is Finn. All right, so this sounds like a few characters here. You see, I got a thief named Casal, uh, an elf uh, magic user. Yes, an elf magic user named Xander. Okay. Finn, a fourth level druid fighter, and then lastly, Unger. Unger? What kind of name is Unger? Unger is your fifth level fighter who's actually a paladin. A paladin? Wow, what the heck is that? That's a very special kind of fighter. Oh, you're gonna love this. We call it a party. You have a dungeon master party. You have a, a group of characters who make up a party to go into the dungeon. I see, okay. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but you just mentioned I got four characters. Is that all? Well, there's one more. It's a henchman. A henchman? You mean these four characters have a henchman too? That's right. That will make five characters in all. Oh, so it's like we hire this henchman, huh? I mean, I'm not Alfred Einstein, but that seems like, the, seems like what a henchman is. That's right. You're catching on fast, Whitey. This is going to be a great game for you. All right, let's go. I'm more excited now. I'm almost as excited as a virgin at the prom. So now what? Well, now you're going to enter a dungeon, and you're going to try to find gold pieces and magic items. That's the goal. Yes, that's the goal. But you're going to have to face evil you know, you're going to have to face bad characters, and you're going to have to assess whether they're good or bad, and perhaps you'll have to fight them to, to obtain some of these items of treasure. Items of treasure, I see. I, I'm starting to understand a little bit. Good, good, because we're going to have to get the game started. Let's go. Let's go now. All right, so what's the name of this dungeon? What's the name of this dungeon you're taking me to? I need to know the name. Well, this dungeon that I have in particular for this adventure is one I have, and it's one I know all the ins and outs about. It's called the Tomb of Horrors. The Tomb of Horrors sounds like a nice place. All right, let's do it. I'm ready to whoop some ass. I'm going to go into this Tomb of Horrors, and I'm going to kick some butt. 
How do you like that? Oh, that sounds great, Whitey. Let's do this. All right, so let me just get ready over here. I'm going to go behind my shield. All right, this is gonna be fun. I'm I'm looking forward to this. I'm I'm looking forward to uh to maybe we could slay a dragon. Maybe we go in there to this two Mahars and we we fight a dragon. I bet that'd be fun. Yeah, that's right. Let's see now. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just had to get the module ready. Module? That's right, it's a pre-written module called the Tomb of Horrors. Now, this legend of the tomb is an old story with many parts, some of, may, some of which may be lost or obscured, but there's a legend lore about the place. It's a lost and lonely hill of grim and foreboding. There's a labyrinth crypt deep underneath the ground. And your characters need to find it. All right. There's a good chance there could be lots of pitfalls. And there's an evil character who lives there, who's known as Acerac, the Demi-Lich. Demi-Lich? Ooh, I think I might have been married to one. Oh, yes. Oh, but this Demi-Lich, this Demi-Lich is real. This Demi-Lich is there, waiting for your characters. You might have to face it yourself. All right, so your party has arrived at the site of the Demi-Lich's last haunt. And before you is a low, flat-topped hill, about 200 yards wide and 300 yards long. It's covered with ugly weeds and thorns, and there's briars that grow upon the steep sides. And the bald top of the 60-foot-high high mound, there are black rock, rocks upon the top of the hill. All right, this is going on a little too long. Can we... Can we just find the entrance to this dungeon? Well, you actually bring up a good point, so I'm just going to have you fall into the entrance, yes. All right, so my characters are on the hill, and then what happens? Uh, let's see here, okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Even a bit of daylight entering through a crawl space that you find in the hill, or a torch is able to reveal that this is an unusual tunnel. We find a tunnel. That's right, there's a tunnel in the ground. Well, we're gonna head on in. We're gonna, we're gonna go in and kick this Demi-Lich's ass. Oh, good, good to hear. As you, as you enter the tunnel, you can see bright, brilliant colors everywhere. The stones and pigments are undimmed by the passage of decades. The floor is a corridor and it's a colorful mosaic of stone with a distinct winding path of red tiles, each two feet wide. There's a snaking, snaking line painted in red that goes down the corridor floor. It's easily visible. All right, so we're going to head on in. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, yes. Now, first in your party is Casal. What would you have Casal do? All right, so Casal, and what's he again? He's a first-level thief. I see. Is he strong? Well, he has two hit points and an armor class of ten because he refuses to wear any armor, being a thief. Armor class of ten? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But if he's the thief and he's in the first in the command and he's leading his way, I want him walking down that hall. How far down the hall can we see? You can see about 50 feet down the hall. Unless you light a torch, then you can see 100 feet. Well, I'm going to have the second, com the second person in the line. Who's that? Well, that's your magic user, Xander. All right, so I'm going to have magic user Xander light a torch so we can see. Okay, you can see 100 feet down the hall. It's about 10 feet wide, and it goes about 100 feet that you can see. It's very dusty, but there's those mosaic tiles up and down the hall, and it looks very interesting. What would you like to do? Well, we're all going to walk down the hall. Oh, good, oh, good, okay. All right. And Casal is in the lead? Yeah, Casal's in the lead, and I guess to be safe, we'll have Casal walk about 10 feet in front of the rest of the party. 
Oh, good. Oh, good. You're getting this, Whitey. You're doing well now, Whitey. Okay, let me just hold on. All right. Okay, Casal, you're going to need to roll for initiative, Casal. Oh, and I'm rolling dice over here. Let's just see now. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, Casal just fell into a pit. He fell into a pit. Yes, a trap door opened up in the first ten feet, and Casal fell in. All right, so we're all going to run to the side and look down. Well, about ten feet down, there's a bunch of spikes, and you see that Casal, unfortunately, has been killed. He's been killed on the spikes. I rolled for his hit points, and unfortunately, he sustained a six of damage. And as I told you before, he only has two hit points. So Casal has deceased, and he's in the bottom of the pit, stuck to the spikes. Oh, my, that's no fun for Casal. Well... I guess Unger's gonna, Unger's gonna take, well, no, wait, uh, who's second in the, in the party? Well, that's Xander. Okay, so Xander's gonna, Xander, now Xander's got spells, right? That's right, Xander's a magic user, a third level magic user. Xander's at armor class is five, and Xander has 12 hit points. Oh, but before you have Xander cast a spell, we're gonna take a break. And we're going to say goodnight because time has run out. But we'll take a, we'll be here next time for the Two Maharas Part 2. We hope you tune in. And I'll let, I'll let Whitey kind of close it out. Interesting. I guess he's right. We only have about 30 seconds left to say goodnight to the citizens of Cambridge. We want to thank you for watching. This has been the Store Drive Nighthawk Show. My name is Whitey. <clears throat> Tonight's episode is dedicated to Gary Gygax, and it's just part one of a whole series we're going to be doing out here. Yeah. I want to thank Austin Rutledge and CCTV for letting me host, and now I'll return to the majestic castle in the sky. This will be one of my final performances here, unless the viewers request seeing more of me. But I will be here next time for part two of the Tomb of Horrors. Thank you again for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Bonsoir and arrivederci.